Welcome. This is a podcast where we discuss manifestos from recent history. Today is January 21st, 2023, and our first manifesto is about futurism. Written around 1909 by Italian poet Lippo Tommaso Marinetti, where he threw copies of this manifesto from atop a clock tower somewhere in Venice. This is a real podcast manifesto, and you fucked up. You clicked the wrong video. You shouldn't be here. My name is Mike, and I flunked all four years of high school literature. And my name is Nick. Uh, We're going to be reading out of my world literature book for my world literature college class because, uh, I don't know, we've probably only read like two or three stories in here, and there's like a fuck ton. So let's just read some manifestos, right? I have to take this. So this manifesto is about futurism, which to what we know now is usually about art. But the original conception of futurism goes way deeper into some uh, very aggressive, passionate discussion about men, to be honest. And so why don't we read the start of his manifesto and titled... The Foundation and Manifesto of Futurism My friends and I had stayed up all night, sitting beneath the lamps of a mosque, whose star-studded, filigreed brass domes resembled our souls, all aglow with the concentrated brilliance of an electric heart. For many hours, we have been trailing our age-old indolence back and forth, over richly adorned oriental carpets, debating at the uttermost boundaries of logic and filling up masses of paper with our frenetic writings. Immense pride filled our hearts, for we felt that at that hour, we alone were vigilant and unbending like magnificent beacons or guards in forward positions, facing an army of hostile stars, which watched us closely from their celestial encampments. Alone we were with the stokers, working feverishly at the infernal fires of great liners, alone with the black specters that rake through red-hot bellies of locomotives hurtling along at breakneck speed, alone with the floundering drunks with the uncertain beating of our wings along the city walls. Suddenly, we were startled by the terrifying clatter of huge double-decker trams jolting by, all ablaze with different colored lights, as if they were villagers in festive celebration, which the River Po, in full spate, suddenly shakes and uproots to sweep them away down to the sea, over the falls and through the whirlpools of a mighty flood. Then the silence became more somber. Yet, even while we were listening to the tedious, mumbled prayers of an ancient canal and the creaking bones of dilapidated palaces on their tiresome stretches of soggy lawn, we caught the sudden roar of ravening motor cars right there beneath our windows. Come on, let's go, I said. Come on, my lads, let's get out of here. At long last, all the myths and mystical ideals are behind us. We're about to witness the birth of a centaur, and soon we shall witness the flight of the very first angels. We shall. We shall have to shake the gates of life itself to test their locks and hinges. Let's be off. See there, the earth's very first dawn. Nothing can equal the splendor of the sun's red sword slicing through our millennial darkness for the very first time. Did somebody mention the door to darkness? We approach the three panting beasts to stroke their burning breasts full of loving admiration. I stretch myself out on my car like a corpse on its bier, but immediately I was revived as the steering wheel, like a guillotine blade, menaced my belly. A furious gust of madness tore us out of ourselves and hurled us along roads as deep and plunging as the beds of torrents. Every now and then, a feeble light flickering behind some window pane made us mistrust the calculations of our all too fallible eyes. I cried out. The scent, nothing but the scent, that's all an animal needs. And we, like young lions, chased after death, whose black pelt was dotted with pale crosses, as he sped away across the vast, violent-tinted sky, vital and throbbing.
And yet, we had no idealized lover whose sublime being rose up into the skies, no cruel queen to whom we might offer up our corpses, contorted like Byzantine rings, nothing at all worth dying for, other than the desire to divest ourselves finally of the courage that weighed us down. But we sped on, squashing beneath our scorching tires the gnar snarling guard dogs at the doorsteps of, of their houses, like crumpled collars under a hot iron. Death, tamed by this time, went past me at each bend, only to offer me his willing paw. And sometimes he would lie down, his teeth grinding, eyeing me with his soft, gentle look from every puddle in the road. Let's leave wisdom behind us, as if it was some hideous shell, and cast ourselves like fruit, flushed with pride, into the immense, twisting jaws of the wind. Let's become food for the unknown, not out of desperation, but simply to fill up the deep wells of the absurd to the very brim. I hardly got these words out of my mouth when I swung the car right around sharply with all the crazy irrationality of a dog trying to bite its own tail. Then suddenly, a pair of cyclists came towards me, gesticulating that I was on the wrong side, dithering about in front of me like two different lines of thought, both persuasive, but for all that quite contradictory. Their stupid uncertainty was in my way. How ridiculous! What a nuisance! I braked hard, and to my disgust, the wheels left the ground and I flew into a ditch. Oh, mother of a ditch, brimful with muddy water, fine repair shop of a ditch. How I relished your strength-giving sludge that reminded me so much of the saintly black breast of my Sudanese nurse. When I got myself up, soaked filthy, foul-smelling rag that I was, from beneath my overturned car, I had a wonderful sense of my heart being pierced by a red-hot sword of joy. A crowd of fishermen with their lines and some gouty old naturalists were already milling around this wondrous spectacle. Patiently, meticulously, they set up tall trestles and laid out huge iron mesh nets to fish out my car, as if it were a great shark that had been washed up and stranded. Slowly, the car's frame emerged, leaving its heavy, sober bodywork at the bottom of the ditch, as well as its soft, comfortable upholstery, as though they were merely scales. They thought it was dead, that gorgeous shark of mine, but a caress was all it needed to revive it, and there it was, back from the dead, darting along with its powerful fins. So, with my face covered in repair shop grime, a fine mixture of metallic flakes, profuse sweat, and a pale blue suit, all with my arms all bruised and bandaged, yet quite undaunted, I dictated our foremost desires to all men on earth, who are truly alive so before we get to his uh she manifesto posits right what do you want to call them his manifesto premises is like his tenets of his manifesto like his yeah. bullet points yeah the tenets Be before we get there this first part uh where he's talking about uh his experience in italy and his car crash seems to be his justification as to why more people should uh live it's hard to talk about because like we nobody knows the audience doesn't know uh what he wants right this is just his experience and then from there he talks about what he actually wants right which is like aggression and stuff like that this is his night out in italy with the boys and then he's just on this like tear through the town in his car and the only thing that sticks out to me that I can see people relating to is like his disdain for bicyclists. Like people in cars immediately hate bicyclists. I'd like hear all my friends talk about it just like as if they like, you know, it's it's so contradictory to like how their like beliefs are. They're just like, oh, man, we need to protect the world, save the environment. Until but they're as in a car. Soon as they're in a car, they <laughs> yeah. fucking hate. Yeah, bicycles. there's a there's a great Portlandia skit about that. Have you seen that? Where it's no. a guy who's always in a cyclist and he fucking hates cars. And then one episode he actually gets in the car and now he fucking hates cyclists. I yeah, like that's like people's brains. Like yeah. they just like it's it's You that, hate the other, that, you hate the out group. Right. 
once you're in behind the wheel of a car, you forget what it's like to just be a pedestrian walking around in a city or a person going on a bike ride. It's very scary. Yeah. It's a fucking people, it's yeah. a weapon. It just like goes over people's head and they're just like, anytime they see someone on a bike, they're just like, fuck you, bike. Why are you on the road, man? Just get a car. Like, I, you know? I think that's one thing about futurism uh, where technology is kind of like a weapon. All, all technology, because they, they like railroads. You know, uh, the, I don't even know what the technology of the time in around 1909 is, but like, they love fast cars, mm. you know, which weren't like, modern day sports cars they're just like you know i don't even know what a fucking 1909 car looks like i don't know but it was faster than a horse so yeah it exactly them, it's yeah. just like oh man it's like great it could run over a cyclist <laughs> like that's how fast they were you know? <laughs> yeah uh what? railroads were dope like what else were popular in futurism besides the art because i know that's what everyone thinks about is the art but uh honestly i don't know shit oh, oh, about a, a fucking uh automation right factories were coming in this town right looms you know those right. uh Textile, textile industries textile like looms, yeah. yeah replacing the worker right uh though all those things is like what futurism was kind of like pushing at least in my mind yeah just like industry yeah and, in industry and, and, uh taking the ownership like consolidating the ownership of the work one person uh is that futurism it's not Technically futurism, but like it's 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 in the same category of like. Uh, well, I think that's when the uh, movement of like te- it's more technology. That's when futurism started to coincide with fascism, where it's like, let's get pretty authoritarian about this. We've always kept records of our lives through words, pictures, symbols, from tablets to books. But not all the information was inherited by later generations. A small percentage of the whole was selected and processed, then passed on. Not unlike genes, really. That's what history is, Jack. But in the current digitized world, trivial information is accumulating every second, preserved in all its triteness, never fading, always accessible. Rumors about petty issues, misinterpretation, slander. All this junk data, preserved in an unfiltered state, growing at an alarming rate. It will only slow down social progress, reduce the rate of evolution. Right. You seem to think that our plan is one of censorship. Are you telling me it's not? You're being silly. What we propose to do is not to control content, but to create context. Create context? From beneath my overturned car, I had a wonderful sense of my heart being pierced by the red-hot sword of joy. That's the line that, in my mind, was the epiphany or in the enlightenment moment that he just, like, changed everything, you know? He was yeah, so probably this guy never had fucking ha- concussion, man. I'm telling you. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> you know like you know that guy that climbed uh the dome, you know, uh without wires or cables? The rock climber? Uh in Yosemite, I think. The half dome. Always, yeah. I'm I'm terrible at these names. I don't but know yeah, his name. I'm, I'm pretty sure but I know of, the, of that guy. That guy, uh you know, he went for the adrenaline rush, and like once you hit that high, you're always chasing, it, right? I think this guy hit a huge high from driving really fast, surviving oh, yeah. near death experience. And you think you're qualified to decide what's necessary and not? Absolutely. Who else could wade through the sea of garbage you people produce, retrieve valuable truths, and even interpret their meaning for later generations? That's what it means to create context. But he, he's just like, uh, he says in here, let's leave wisdom behind us as if it were some hideous shell and cast ourselves like fruit flushed with pride. So it's like wisdom to me, I guess, is like prior experience. Like you gain wisdom over time with experience. Uh, so let's leave the wisdom. So I think that's like academia. That's tradition. Uh, all that stuff. Right. Let's start afresh. He's like, it, he honestly he just sounds like a teenager. Just like, ah oh, man, like, fuck all this stuff. You guys don't know what you're talking about. We're living in a new age now. There's things that are happening now that, you know, that, you know, that, you know, like, let's just say like his grandparents wouldn't understand or know about because things have changed. I'm sure like I felt that in my age, like when we we're on the cusp of like, you know, internet 2.0, uh, there was a new wave 
a new socialist movement, uh, a way of thinking that like my parents couldn't have understood because they grew up on, you know, pre-internet and, you know, uh, yeah, this is like, this is the way I feel like his brain is working right now where he's just like, you old motherfuckers don't know shit. Like the world is changing. So it's up to us young bloods to pave the way, pave this new way and get rid of like this excess weight that we've been carrying from the past. I feel like he's building into that. Well, I don't even think he gets there. Like everything he's talking about is so uh, painted, you know, right. It's he's like, uh, you know, he's really just talking about the possibility of, you know, what the world could be. I mean, it's right in the name futurism. But he's, right. he's saying like, uh, you know, we're on the new era of like a mechanical beast world. Mm. Right. I don't know. It's it's sort of uh, he's kind of uh, has some like pretty strong forethought as like. You know, because he's right in a, in a lot of ways. He he is. We are on, at this moment in time. We are experiencing something brand new, right. right? But he's a sloppy motherfucker. Like this guy, it literally is just like dodging pedestrians on the road, like crashed his car into a ditch, and and now he's just like, oh, my car better be fucking alive. And yeah, they pull out some of his car. Well, do you think he's a bad driver? I know it's irrelevant, but do you think he was a bad driver? Oh fuck yeah! This guy's like wasted. <laughs> oh true, yeah, true. He is. He is fucking drinking. Uh, um, actually, where does it say that he's? Remember, he's parting off his boys. Yeah. Right. It's near the beginning. Yeah, yeah. Uh, flounder alone with the floundering drunks. So he's just alone with his friends. Right. Right. That's what that means. Flaun yeah, the floundering drunks, just like walking around all aloof and just guys. Let's like uh, let's go in fucking Tommaso's car. And just gun it. You think they call him by his middle name? <laughs> Let's uh, go into Tommaso's car. Yeah, it's like call me Tom. Tommy's car. It, it's you know, there's so much here, but there's almost it's not the interesting part. Right. You know, like I, clearly this is who he is, and I, I've said this several times where it's just he is a uh, flamboyant, flamboyant poet. Like he loved this flowery language. Uh -huh. I think you know it shows you who he is. He's kind of he's kind of weak. Right, not not weak, not that poets are weak, but he's it's he's soft, you know. Right. And I think giving him emotional. A, he's emotional. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And getting a car was like, uh, you know, he finally, uh, had power. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like getting a vehicle was like, oh, I have a weapon now. Yeah. Right? He's like he has a he has a, literally and figuratively like a new medium of yeah. life. Like exactly. I I can maneuver in this way. And how dare these motherfuckers and cyclists, like, they, how come they haven't adapted to this? Like, yeah, how come they're, they're in my way now? Yeah. And it's just so funny because he gets up, like, in this sludge and he's pissed. He thinks the traffic you know, is the cyclist. I feel like you're not giving this man enough credit because I don't think he was an idiot. I think he was very, I don't know if he was intelligent, but I think, you know, for him to, uh, to really, like, think of this, uh, of just, like, hyper acceleration of just like newest technology you know he, he was probably the in the first era of seeing like oh every decade there's something like better mm. you know much of history was like the same old for thousands of years is like no new innovations maybe one right. new innovation every few generations or whatever i well, mean i i, I, I kind of see myself in him whenever i like see like fax machines around right like fax machines are still dope <laughs> they're still dope they're funny but like you know, you ever like been forced to use a fax machine? Uh, no. Like, I like so. Uh, when my old man passed, like I've had to fax like probably more than seven, six or seven different departments slash companies to release like his account information or whatever. Like I had to send a death certificate. Some of these places you can email. Can't you send places, like? You can't you digitally? Fax. Digitally fax? Well, yeah, now you can digitally fax. But before that admin, there was maybe like a four or five, seven year period window. Where you had to get a, your own fax machine. To yeah, fax yeah like how the fuck am I going to find a fax machine? And don't you have to machine? plug it into your landline? Right. Or do you have to buy a separate number? 
Dude, I actually, I never faxed from home. I always, like, faxed from some FedEx, office. Kinko's. So, yeah. yeah, some FedEx, Kinko's. But, like, at the time, I was frustrated. I was like, dude, the fuck are we faxing? Like, come on. It's, like, 2008. Like Yeah, uh, so you're, like, Barnetti. <laughs> yeah, so, like, you're that's, a fucking futurist. Exactly. That's, like, uh, that's where I resonate with him. It's just, like, motherfuckers, like, uh, uh, get rid of this shit. Get rid of this fax machine. Like, it's 2008. We can take pictures. We can we, we scan stuff. We can send it digitally. We email. Like, please let me send this into an email. But you want to make me fucking fax it? Well, For what? There is like a fear of moving too fast, right? That's a very conservative ideal, right? Like, hey, it still works. Like, let's, you know, it still works and we understand it. Let's not move too fast, right? There's a fear in that sense. Uh, but there's a comfortability as well. Right. Uh, I know exactly that fear. That fear is when, uh, uh, did you see the new video of Atlas? Uh, the um, Atlas is the name of that Boston Dynamics robot, the one that's like walking around on hydraulics. Yeah. So now it can pick up things. Okay, I didn't see it. Oh, dude, we gotta look at it after this. All right, we can do it. We can do it like in between, but like this. It, so now, before it used to be like, look at me, I can go up steps. And You're talking I, about when it picks up the square box? It's doing more than that. It's so I the latest video. I think I saw a juggle something. Once. The the guy is on a scaffold. It's part of a skit now. They're doing skits with it now. Uh, so the guy's on a scaffold. Like fuck, I forgot my tools. If only I had some help. And then it pans down to the Atlas robot, and it gets up, looks around at the area, finds a wood plank. I mean, it's just all scripted out. But the fact that it can still in real time process it, gets a plank, makes a little draw bridge platform goes to the tools picks up the tools literally is just like running up the platform skipping through climbs up and see the guy on the scaffold that, that, and tosses it that, up to him that, this is fear of the future yeah so like i don't think fear of the future is the same thing of uh as fear of losing the past uh they're closely related of course yeah. but i don't think they're the same thing dude no no i'm saying like seeing that it makes me scared for a bit because i was like shit i'm not ready for that yet i was like I was like, I've been waiting for like to see it because I'm like looking at these robots barely able to walk and they can knock it down and like it barely stabilizes. But now it, you know, a couple years later, it moved. It's way beyond, you know, its stability now. Now it's like picking up objects and place or creating a place for it to walk on. Like it understands terrain. I was just like, oh, shit. Like, I'm not ready for that yet. Like, because why not? Cause like now, uh, now it's like it's just creating an unlocked what you, reality. What if your mailman was just a Boston Dynamics robot? Yeah, like a little creepy, right? No, it's somehow the creepy a little thing. Is that guy lost his job? But as long right. as right, but, so but like... that always happens. But like, is more background, like, or it's more overt. So when the um, checkout machines first started appearing in the supermarkets. It's and my initial thought was like, cool, cool. You gave me power. Like, but now or, you think like, oh, they just displaced it, four different workers. Yeah, but but it's like to me, like it, it it didn't really like register. It didn't really register because it's like a stationary machine. It's not like it's not like a robot picking up my items and scanning it. I'm like, whoa, like look at this robotic arm. You are the up. worker. Yeah, like <laughs> I, I I'm, you do the work. Yeah, it's just like giving me the tools. Like you gave me the tools to do the scanner and I'll punch in the code, whatever. But like a robot mailman like coming by me seeing that it's just like i used to like enjoy seeing my like usual postman come through or post lady and just like chat it up with them uh now it's not a thing anymore you can chat so with like, the robot is that, that's not the same have you chatted though? with chat gpt i haven't but it's you should he's she they pretty interesting <laughs> yeah but like i can't just be like yo how long you been living here or no, you can it gives you pretty interesting responses. Look, the the I reason why you I want something real. Like, no, it, it's because you can't sympathize with a, a neural network that's just no, a bunch. I of can't, stuff. and I won't because a real human will. I can but like can, understand okay. that. I can, can understand you, the plight. Okay, here's like, here's a weird plate. one. Here here's one that's not even related to this podcast. Can you sympathize with a rock? No. Why not? You're because, both like children of because Gaia. A, a rock will never able to. Um, communicate any plight any yeah. emotion it probably me. doesn't suffer like you do it and definitely doesn't that's think what like makes you do. us human 
are these emotions? So like, like that postal worker, yeah, I could just be like, yo, how many more neighbors? Have you, you ever have to personified an object? Hmm? Have you ever personified an object? Oh yeah, all the time. I got my plants. That's Jada Plant Smith. But those Jada are alive. Smith. Those are alive. That's Fernie Sanders. Uh, Trio Dio's back there, and I haven't named this one yet. It's right, I'm talking about like this globe. Yeah. If this globe were destroyed, wouldn't you feel bad about for the globe? Uh, it's, its purpose is now taken away from it if it were destroyed. This is all going to be cut. This is a separate issue. <laughs> yeah. But well, there's levels to it. Like, I like this globe is like, I only like it because I think it's a nice globe. It serves a purpose, right? It, it has value to you. Yeah. Relative to you, it has value. It's serving a purpose to you, right? And were it to lose its value and purpose, you would be sad that the object has changed. In a sense, it would have yeah. died. Yeah. Right? It is no longer what it used to be. It has changed, right. right? Like, it's all just molecules, but at the same time, it's changing. Right. A, a AI robot that's a neural network can help you serve a purpose, especially if you're interacting with it on a regular basis. Or like a checkout line. Like, you know, when there's like four automatic checkout lines, right. let's say one day, electricity is gone. But that's just like me. That's just me putting like... Uh... It's an Me, illusion. It's yeah, an illusion. But what, what is like, yeah. what are all these feelings like love and empathy? Like, it's, they're just your brain activating those same reasons that make you love a dog or that make you love a woman. You can, your, your brain can fire off similar neurons that right. love AI, that love inanimate objects. I'm saying you're a bigot. I don't think, <laughs> I don't think my brain could ever like uh, match the level of like. Oh, I'm not saying like, it has to match. It will never fire the exact same neurons, but it will right. fire something similar. Right. Like well, uh, when you eat pizza versus when you eat the individual ingredients of a pizza, right? Similar neurons being fired, but not the same type and not the same intensity. If you ate cheese and then tomato sauce and then bread, you it wouldn't hit the same as a pizza. No, no, it wouldn't. They're, they're yeah, different, but I but it still hits. It yeah, still hits. Still, yeah, it it hits, but not it's not the same. And like that's what I'm trying to say is like I'm not ready for that. Like why would I downgrade? Why would I downgrade something? You know, like if. I'm already saying human, human like interaction and you know social, whatever is the pinnacle, of like you know, of what should be there. Why would I ever downgrade it? Like it still has value. Like these other objects. Shit, is it AI. the pinnacle? Is it the pinnacle? Yes. Yes. Okay. What like, if you were to meet something that's more human than any human being could be? I'm not saying AI either. I'm saying like a nth dimensional being who is multiple humans at once right you which you never met and i don't even know if they exist but let's say you did meet something of that scale that's so divine that you would argue what you ever what you are talking to as an entity on comparison to god okay just saying not that god exists or whatever fuck god's dead but like so if god was my mailman like i would probably enjoy that like thank you god you know thank you for Right, so you can go in the other direction. If something is better than a human, you're right. for it. But if something is worse than a human, you're not. You're against it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You're a futurist. <laughs> now I'm keeping it all in because now I just brought it back. Something. If something is better, just like a car is better than a horse. Right. But the thing is, I don't think I'm a futurist because I think I think humans are the pinnacle, you know, of our interaction like our environment like i prefer nothing other than a human right now sorry aliens sorry i know you're i know you're listening right now but you know so they're not the ones listening in. yeah you you ain't making my tea <laughs> listen to you listen you're a damn schoolboy motor you have no idea no idea okay oh, then tell me tell me you guys was just like going to poetry slams in italy and no one really gave a fuck about him. He's just like, you know what? I'm going to make them give a fuck about me. And I'm going to just climb up to the city square, the town center, and just fucking just bombard the whole town with pamphlets of my manifesto. And eventually yeah, not people a bad, read the not shit. Not a bad idea. I mean, I, I feel like back then, if you got like a three-page pamphlet, that'd be like a TikTok. You know, it's like super accessible. <laughs> super readable you know like if you if you did this with this pamphlet today no one's gonna read it. it's too long but back then this was really short i i would imagine if he did this today it would be polluting 
this guy is literally like I can imagine this shit no, like paper is his pamphlets just you know but they're just flying in the wind. This is like in a city, and the city's like, "Yo, what the? Who the fuck is this guy? F.T. Marinati? We're gonna get his ass because he's just dumping paper throughout the town. The shit is getting wet, like just creating like <laughs> it's just I creating wonder that what city the trash." Said. I don't know. I don't think people gave a shit about trash. It kind of reminds me of that uh, Mad Men episode. Did you watch Mad Men? Yeah, when he's just at the picnic and he dumps all his trash. Yeah, they were probably of that. <laughs> they were well, so unapologetic about it. It's just like, all right. You, you know, that's so interesting that you say he probably doesn't give a shit about trash because his manifesto is like not giving a shit about the right. consequences of your actions. Right, it's like, this guy. Do whatever you want. Do whatever is violent. Do whatever is aggressive. Do whatever feels passionate. Because fuck it. Like, that literally is how it feels. It's like, uh, this guy does not give a fuck about any repercussions it's all about just uh pure dominance yeah um just because we have the tools to do something we should fucking go a thousand percent in and not look back just keep going uh just you know i get why people are into it like it kind of sounds cool if you don't think about it you know it sounds like something you'd be down with it sounds cool it sounds cool for a toddler just like Man, fuck the world. Like, I don't even know. It's not. I like, don't even think it's that. Not, I, it's not jaded. I, like, fuck the world. But it's more like, uh, I'm gonna do what I want. I'm gonna just do what I want. Like, uh, and I'm going a thousand percent. Um, and there's no reason I shouldn't. Okay. Now to the tenets of the futurist manifesto. How about I read these and then we'll discuss each one individually. All right. So number one, we want to sing about the love of danger, about the use of energy and the recklessness as common daily practice. This is like some macho man shit. It's like, yeah. Uh, yeah, devil may care attitude. It's, uh, it's not, you know, if you take it to the extreme, it sounds like, you know, uh, what are those people called when they like stuntmen? Yeah, or adrenaline like, junkies. Adrenaline or, junkies, yeah. It sounds yeah. like let's just keep that heart like crank. Like lean into it. Yeah. Like, you know, people are people are kinda like a little um what's like a little off put by like some like some activities that are like high adrenaline. But he's saying like, man, fuck all those qualms. Like this should be just regular. Like It's obviously a uh, high risk, right? The high risk thing to do to like always put yourself in danger right uh but usually high risk comes with high reward usually he's a gambler he's a gambler yeah he's, he's a gambler like let's let's uh let's let it ride put it all on red is there any way to tie this back into the beginning of like yeah love of danger is i guess going fast in your car is just like yeah, it's a dangerous act drunk you're getting drunk driving yeah that's a very dangerous act and you know i gotta imagine if no consequences occur of it, it's pretty fun. That everything mankind does is much, much easier if you're ever so slightly drunk. You know? For sure. Yeah. Like, uh, you know, this obviously isn't his first stroll around town. He didn't just decide out of nowhere. Like, you know, he's obviously done this before. But he's so like, hey, guys, I know how to have a good time right now. Let's get in the car. Statistically, if you're doing dangerous things every single day, it's going to catch up. But clearly he's fine with that. Like that's part of futurists. Like yeah. you're gonna fucking get hurt. This probably isn't the first car he crashed into a ditch. I'm not as strong as you. I never was. I did my best. Number two, courage, boldness, and rebellion will be essential elements in our poetry. So this is like, you know, I don't think poetry is literally poetry. 
I think it's like how you present yourself, right? right. Like the poetry of your life, right? Yeah. His mannerisms, your, your whatever you're putting out into the world. Yeah, your art. Uh, this one is one of the tenets of futurism that I think last even till today. Like if you look at modern futurism art or the the spinoffs of it, right? They're not as dangerous as they once were. You know, like Banksy, I would say is like a dangerous artist because he's like putting his uh, safety on the line, right? Everyone wants to know who Banksy is and he's doing graffiti in illegal spots, right? That, that's like dangerous, but most artists don't do that. Most artists only have like that courage, that boldness, that rebellion, but they're not dangerous. Why are these tenants put in together? Like courage and boldness, that's like one in... It's like the, the same fucking similar. word. Similar. <laughs> it's the same so, fucking yeah, word. It's pretty redundant. Well, I think a lot of people, especially me include, like, uh, threeness. We use, yeah. like, you know, the Oxford comma. The Holy Trinity. Um, but something about him loves the ideal of, like, a rebellious attitude. Well, I think it uh, it's part of the futurism thing. It's like, I mean, we're going to get into it in later bullet points, but, you know, fuck museums, fuck establishment, fuck tradition. Right. Don't ask for permission. Just do it, you know? And then don't even ask for forgiveness. <laughs> Fuck all of it. There's something uneasy to me about rebellious attitude. Because it's like, yeah, it might be a good reason to have this rebellious attitude. Maybe there's like a lot of repression or just like redundancies in like the system that you're living in. But uh, to have that as a core tenant is just like, well, then how are you going to have like a, a following? Like, aren't eventually over time you're going to rebel against something and then maybe your followers are going to rebel against what you want so it just kind of seems to uh it's just chaotic it's just chaotic like that's what he wants that's part of it this is the joker yeah this is the joker Number three, up to now, literature has extolled a contemplative stillness, rapture, and reverie. We intend to glorify aggressive action. Action. We intend to glorify aggressive action, uh, restive wakefulness, life at the double, the slap, and the punching fist. I don't even know what. Yeah, I don't know what the fuck this one means. <laughs> yeah, uh, contemplative stillness. Rapture. He's What's saying rapture. What's ra the like the 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 holy like the end? Uh, yeah, when like people die. Okay, so there's literature has extolled a contemplative stillness. I think he's saying literature is boring, and uh, we need to make literature not boring. Literature should punch you in the face. Mm. Like literature should be sexy. Literature should be you know gory. Literature should uh talk about things that literature hasn't talked up yet. Yeah, so it sounds like he's saying... Like that book, House of Leaves. Have you seen that book? No. Oh, that's like up this guy's alley. Do tell. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Look up House of Leaves. You heard it. Hey, you do it. It's it's uh, interesting. I like House it. of Leaves. I think he wants. he wants like a smut. <laughs> or like, you know, he wants like a, like comic books, you know? that Things that haven't existed yet. That's what he wants, mm. right? Like, when's, when does Superman come out? I don't think it came out yet. Superman? Yeah, Superman's like 1930s. Uh, yeah. This is 1909. Okay. But he yeah. wants, he wants like... comics back then? I don't, I don't think so, but he wants like badass stuff. Like stuff that your parents would be... <laughs> yeah. You know, like he said, he's a teenager. He wants things that are like naughty, you know? Right. Like what, what slaps you in the face? Um, what punches you as a book or as literature? Um, like war, war novels. Well, no, yeah. what about videos? Videos. Talk about literature. Oh, I mean, videos is like literature to me in my head is just like a medium of art, communicative art. Like, right. You 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 could it's synonymous with art, literature, art, movies, music. Uh, I mean, the shit is like not that prominent back then. Right now, it's probably like in his time right now, like books are slapping, like books are hitting, like oh man, you guys. You know, I think motion pictures were starting around then. 
Yeah. I know the camera was like starting around then. Yeah. Or in its infancy. But it's like, you know, people back then, that's like probably just like a delicacy to them or or not delicacy. It's like, it's, it's, uh, um, it's not a daily activity. Yeah. What's the word for it? When a rarity. Is, yeah. It's like rarity or it's privileged. It's very yeah. privileged to be like sitting down in front of like TV with like, like a meaningful piece of art. Whereas like these books, you know, these are their movies. Like, dude, did you read the new print? Like from fucking uh, Dr. Seuss. Not out yet, but okay. Pretty much, yeah. Dr. Seuss, you know, that, that cat in the hat. Yeah. Should have done more research and figure out which books he didn't like. <laughs> like, which books did he think were fucking slapping and which books were boring, you know? Right. All right, well, this is what you get watching this. Half complete thoughts. <laughs> I wish my daddy, he were alive to see this, <laughs> to feel this. Number four, we believe that this wonderful world has been further enriched by a new beauty, the beauty of speed. A racing car, its bonnet decked out with exhaust pipes like serpents with galvanic breath. A roaring motor car, which seems to race on like machine gun fire. It's more beautiful than the winged victory of moth race. Yeah, there's a little citation there. So the, the Samothrace is a famous Hellenistic sculpture from the Greek island of Samothrace and is now ha housed in the Louvre. Basically... This guy loves Sonic the Hedgehog. Like, he loves speed. Loves he loves speed. bad. Yeah. The Flash, but, you know, that comic book isn't out yet, but he will like it. I think m meth or amphetamine's out at this time. Amphetamine okay. has been discovered at this point. So he's probably like taking amphetamine at some point. Oh, yeah. You know, slamming that back with like a quad espresso. Yeah. Taking a drinking. Is Coke out by this time? I feel like it might have been like actual cocaine Coke. Um, Probably, you know. But like in the Coca-Cola, like the old school Coca-Cola. Oh, <laughs> like when, when cough medicine used to have just like heroin in it and like, you know. Yo, I got to look. When was Coca-Cola out? Do you know when Coca-Cola was made? I'm going to guess 1850s. I'm going to say 1910. When was Coca-Cola? Yeah, so this guy likes like loud exhaust pipes. You know, no mufflers. Just like cut, the, cut that muffler 1892. off. 1892. So yeah, this we guy's were... hopped up on Coke. Hopped up on Coke, likes to drive loud, fast cars, which is not too different of a lot of people on this planet now who still like to drive loud, fast cars. Like, that is still around. But oh, I... Yeah. You know, Our culture is, like... Bigger than ever. Yeah, it's embedded in American, like, culture. I don't think it's just America, though. I think it's yeah. close to worldwide. It's not just America, but, like, it's it's very prominent here. Like, every you can see it with our traffic and our, like, the way we build out our cities. It's, like gives priority to cars yes even cops like cops cops, cops have, like, love driving they fast love, they love yeah. cars so this one this one continued on yeah Th this um, love for speed uh i don't think many people who love speed would call themselves futurists because right. a lot of people who like fast cars they like classic fast cars right you know uh like th this doesn't really feel like a uh, a strong tenant this this point here point for speed no or it's just literally just like a dude it gets replaced like... with technology right right futurism is like about a faster bit rate uh overclocking your oh, CPU. Yeah, yeah overclock the cpu fucking i don't know dyno there's a dyno tune on your car get a electric vehicle car whatever ev and then get it faster than uh a diesel or right a... right just like it has a better torque ratio yeah um yeah this is all about just like doubling up doubling up everything with whatever the yeah. newest technology is faster 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 <laughs> Number
Number five, we wish to sing the praises of men behind the steering wheel whose sleek shaft traverses the earth, which itself is hurling at breakneck speeds along Gray's track of its orbit. He loves to glorify men, right? And there's just so much in my mind interest in like feeling up the car. Like, feeling up the car, what do you mean? You know, there's a, a branch of people on this planet who are like uh, in love with sticking their dicks in the exhaust pipe of a vehicle. Yo, pause. <laughs> and so I just think, uh, is that a futuristic no, idea? Boy, like, like, you're like gonna fucking your car? Yeah, fucking your car. No, I think, I think, <laughs> I think he's trying to say like, I think he's oh, trying to say like, reading into this one. Huh? Uh, like, no, I think he's saying like, all right, like, he loves the car, but he wants but to sing about it. Respect to, respect to the pilot who can maneuver the car it's all about respecting the the pilot the pilot behind the wheel you know i mean i, I can see that like, this is some like tom cruise shit like uh, uh what's it called my fucking brain dun -dun 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 -dun. Uh, top gun top gun some top gun shit like it's like yeah not only are those fighter jets cool and the breakneck speeds that they're doing the fucking cobra maneuvers in the sky but it takes a certain pilot. But and shout it... out to that pilot that can like handle those the G forces, the breakneck speeds, and maneuver it. But why why sing praises for him? I'm taking I mean, it quite literally. Because I I I say he's like singing those praises because not everyone knows how to drive a car. Right. But but the ones that do you should gotta... be revered. That's why you like he wants to distinguish and differentiate who those pilots are. It's like, this is the way for him to like, um, like, you know, you can't always go to war. So like soldiers will be praised during wartime, but when it's a stand down period, there's gotta be a way for soldiers or men to be praised. How are we going to praise them is like the ones that can maneuver vehicles, the ones that can, whatever future that he sees that's manly but that's like a core tenet of his philosophy <laughs> it, it just seems so yeah. out of out of the blue no no i think it makes sense because like i don't think we're building yet into like his more uh Look, everything so far is about like acts like you should want to be dangerous you should want to have you know rebellious poetry you should you know care about good literature that uh, you should want to be fast and then this one is just like, also, these men are really cool. <laughs> like These guys yeah. are the coolest, you know? Right. And I think he's, this is purposely he's doing this because he wants to, he wants to uh, create some sort of distinguishment. Like, he needs to find a way to, like. I think he has a crush on uh, uh, race car drivers. He just doesn't want to admit it. I mean, this just sounds like someone who's really good at doing something. And yeah, so why not, he's still, why like, not, trying to create like, why not praise, a trophy about it. Praise men who are experts at their craft. But no, it's like all about, you know. The man behind his steering wheel. Uh, I think that's just like metaphoric for like, uh, you know. I mean, this is like big in his time. In, in this time, like, this is the newest thing. So I, I bet, like, if he wrote this right now, it'd just be, like, the man who could, like, maneuver a jetpack. Like, whoever can fly an F-15, F-35 now, you know? Like, no, I think it'd still be about men behind the wheel of cars. You don't, th you don't think, like, you know, they haven't really created speedboats yet. They haven't really created a lot of things that we drive now. There weren't, there weren't like... Uh, thousand cc motorcycles that can like blast through highways and yeah i would say he'd probably be more about motorcycles way more dangerous yeah yeah so it's like i think right now the fastest thing he knows in his time is this car like it's all about speed so whatever whatever can like you know get him from one location to the next is the coolest thing so right now it's a car so he's going to respect anyone who's driving the car if he was living in this day and age he'd be like pilots like, we need to sing praises to the pilots that will, that are able to. But not anyone can be a pilot, whereas almost anyone can have a car. 
And I think he would like that better. I think oh, true. Like, I think he yeah. would like, yeah, I, yeah, I they, agree with like, you. He wants to distance himself from the haves and have-nots, like, yeah. or people that can do something yeah. actionable. I agree. He would love Top Gun. Oh, yeah. I have prescription for this thy malady. For I tell thee, Antonio, I know thy sickness. Tis love, nay, not love, but the absence of it. For love, a different sickness is, and different prescriptions to be prescribed. Strange sickness when having it not, it doth make thee ill. Tis that which I would catch, and thus be made well again. And yet I have it not, and being thus cured, am still in pain. Uh, number six. The poet will have to do all in his power, passionately, flamboyantly, with generosity of spirit, to increase the delirious fervor of the primordial primordial elements. So I think he's trying to say, like, uh, you know, like um, the like just the primal like instincts of like humanity, like hunger, fear, anger, sadness, whatever. Uh, we need to just amplify it. Like, don't try to tame it for society like oh i shouldn't be angry right now it's like if you're angry like show it yeah do it passionately um and with generosity of spirit yeah so like just you need it you need to just like accentuate your feelings like your your like your primal feelings flamboyantly though yeah i think flamboyantly to him is do you just, think it had a different meaning back then yeah because now it means like yeah, it has kind of has like a, a gay like. Tone. Yeah, <laughs> to be flamboyant is kind of you know to be gay. Yeah, in a sense, not not necessarily. You can be flamboyant right. and still uh, attract women and be attracted to right. women. I just only use that word whenever I see someone do something very flamboyant, and it's like gay. Yeah, but it doesn't have to be. It didn't have to be, but, you know, that's what natural tendency in this, like, context of this day and age. But back then, I'm pretty sure, you know, he means it as in, like, uh... Showy. Yeah, very showy. A showman, you know? Generosity of spirit. That's, like, just, you know, don't hold back on, like, whatever energy you feel. Um, that kind of feels like number two. Yeah, I mean, a lot of these are, like, building on each other. There's nothing, like so far out of place from one another in my opinion they're yeah all very like blunt very they're all like, about getting mad and getting manly <laughs> yeah this is like the original red pill movement you know or not yeah red pill but just very manospheric you know very uh just aggressive you know we haven't gotten to the point which is probably my favorite point but <laughs> I think I know. But it's all about you know, uh, just being, being you know, top of your pack, right? Top G. I don't know about that one, but it's all about just like uh, trying to, uh, almost like trying to get noticed, you know, separating yourself, like like you said, from those who can to those who can't, or those who don't even try. Right. I it's like uh he has a very like Darwinism like yeah. man the weed will weed its uh the weak will die. Yeah, the weak will die off and the strong, the strong men will survive and we need to just like praise those strong men like You think that's why he's pointing out poets like poets you have to do this cuz you're not going to survive. The only way to survive as a poet in my world is to be aggressive and be passionate and like don't hold back. Because if you're a reserved poet in this futurist manifesto, you're probably going to die. You're probably one of the first to die. Yeah. Uh, I honestly think he's reaching out in that manner because uh, he just doesn't like any sort of weakness. He's scared. He's scared. This is like uh, this is like a time on the war just being – or uh, the world being on the fringe of just like violence. And he probably loves the shit out of his country as any man probably would. And fears that like another nation that is more courageous and bolder and stronger that doesn't have like soft arts will sh wreck them, you know? So like he's honestly writing from a point of just trying to strengthen up his countrymen. 
He he doesn't want anyone to be weak. Uh, and who could blame him? To be honest, who could blame him if he's like thinking that way? Yeah, but it, there's a difference between like encouraging resilience and uh, you know, fuck, uh, not protecting weak people. You know, right? Like he's already, he, you know, we haven't gotten there yet, but he's kind of saying like, hey, if you don't do these things, no one's gonna have your back. <laughs> right? You're on your own. Right. right. O- only only if you are strong can you like chill or like. You know, let's hang let's, with the best. let's see if we can read into it and see if it like where his ideas stand on like a more morality scale. Let's though there's I doubt there's any morals in this at all. <laughs> yeah, I'm I don't have high hopes for it either, but you know, uh it's it's still we're still kinda like speculating on to where his mindset is at is at. Is he obviously he's obviously protective of his country in the sense that he realizes like being strong is like an ideal core foundation being bold and courageous um which can work as a you know as a foundation for like any you know ideology who the fuck would want to say uh let's let's soften up our voices it's like no uh, like everyone starts off saying let's we need strong bold ideas <laughs> it's very cliche but it you know we, we don't really know where he's working at yet i got nothing left for that one yeah me neither i kind of was bullshitting yeah i could tell Uh, number seven, there is no longer any beauty except the struggle. Any work of art that lacks a sense of aggression can never be a masterpiece. Poetry must be thought of as a violent assault upon the forces of the unknown, the intentions of making them prostrate themselves at the feet of mankind. Uh, this is the first one I can kind of dig with. <laughs> the first one that like I resonated with. So I think what he's saying there is just like... Uh... Poetry or like art or whatever medium for like uh like communicating some some sort of like message to people. You need to shock them. Like you you need to be violent. You need to, you need to like get to like get to their souls. Like instead of saying we as a society should ponder upon like what the best. No, he's saying you need to be violent. Like hey motherfuckers, wake up. Get your gun. Go outside. Oh, about that one it protects some shit like it, like he's he's well i think uh kind of not a bad idea <laughs> it, it like it, if your art isn't uh pissing someone off right then it's like uh you know you haven't it, it doesn't necessarily have to piss people it's, off it's like i think he's just saying it's it's like it's just weak art if your art doesn't like transcend like, invoke, something invoke, yeah if it doesn't invoke some sort of like oh like fear or sort of like a strong emotion then it's like pointless. Well, like, I don't know if it's pointless because one, it could be just you're getting better at your craft. Right. But if it's like, if you're not, if that's what you're showing to the world, like just don't show it. Just get better at it and show like, you know. Yeah, it's too weak. It's too weak. He, he wants it to like, he want, he's, everyone step up your game. Like make, make me cry. Make me angry. Like, because if not, then, you know, it's just not worth it. You know, the one thing that, is also not like truly uh, hitting me on this is you can't have like really soft art that is aggressive in its softness. Like, you know, there are really good like uh, watercolor paintings, right? right? It's like, and watercolor is a very soft, you know, like especially if you use like a, a light pastel, like uh-huh. gradient. It can be very aggressive in the sense of, oh wow, no one's done this. I've never seen this before. Right. Like you did it to a scale, which is new. But it's not like hard brush strokes or many rapid fine brush strokes, right? It's just like letting fucking ink blots on a piece of paper, you know? So soft you're saying soft art I'm saying aggressive does not necessarily have to be like a physical overt aggressiveness. It could Yeah, it doesn't be... have to be actually like uh 
a strong force. It can right. be aggressive in comparison to other things in that genre or in the medium. Right. And yeah, I think I think that's where he's getting at. No, but like, I think he it's like the very first sentence of this. There's no longer any beauty except the struggle. Right. That part's like that. Part, that part's dope. Yeah, I agree with that part. Yeah, I like I like that part. The second part. Right. The second part's also kind of interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it kind of builds on that. Yeah, and but the, what we've been saying it's like it can never be a masterpiece if it, if your art isn't aggressive. But the third part's where I fall off because it's like now you there's no way you can spin violent assault except for like. You know, like a like a Pollock painting, like right. That's violent assault. It says a violent assault upon the forces of the unknown. Like, what do you think he meant by that? Like, you need a like your art needs to be violent upon the forces of unknown. Maybe it's like when an artist says, uh, "What they made came from like a divine place or like a muse." Mm. Right. A lot of artists say, "You know, I didn't come up with that. It came to me." Mm -hmm. And I guess he's arguing like, "Hey, whatever is coming to you." fucking assault them and get that idea quicker like stop waiting on mm. your muse to come to you you go find that muse you know mm -hmm. and maybe that's what he's getting at uh, number eight we stand upon the furthest promontory of the ages why should we why should we be looking back over our shoulders if what we desire is to smash down the mysterious doors of the impossible? Time and space died yesterday. We are already living in the realm of the absolute. For we have already created infinite omnipresent speed. That's This is a very arrogant one. Yeah, this isn't... is the one that's like, he thinks he's at the end of history. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like when people say like, oh, we've already solved the economy. Capitalism is like all there is. We're at the end of history. You know, it's very, you know, your your brain isn't working hard enough. You know, if you think this is like the the top pinnacle of like where we've accomplished, you know. I like that your brain isn't working hard enough. Yeah. He hasn't even gone through VR, bro. Have you been on VR chat, dog? Like, have you got an email? Um. I do like how he says time and space have died yesterday. That was kind of cool. Does that mean like Einstein's general relativity and special relativity already came out? It was like 1930s. They dropped the bomb in 1946, 45. 45. That's the end of the war. I want to say one of his papers came out around this time. But it was only proven later. Because mm -hmm. remember, when he wrote down the theory of general relativity, it took him like a year or two to actually prove it. Like, whoops, evidence of like um, lights bending around a massive object. Right. Because you can only do that observation during uh, an eclipse, at least during the time of that technology. So it must have, for him to like think like, Time and space die yesterday. Yeah, to, to right. combine time and space is a very Einsteinian thing. Yeah. So he's pretty much coming to the conclusion that we're we're there. We're right on the cusp of like yeah, starting to bend yeah. shit to our will. Have already like started to break down what it means for time and space. Like so to him, that's the end. That's the end all of like where we're going forward as like a species or just like sentient being. But like. Uh, I just think he's thinking that like it's not the end I don't think he's thinking like oh we've reached the pinnacle of it I think what he's trying to say is we're on like it's like some Murphy Law shit like we're, our, we're on the fast track to it there's no stopping this train okay that, that guy I can agree with not not agree with but i can understand that one a little bit mm. harder so like for him he's just saying like the human will is persistent it's just gonna get there Pandora's like, box has been opened yeah because like we may not actually have gotten there yet but we essentially have gotten there like i won't live to see it but it's gonna happen we're we're there essentially so it's like knowing that like you're gonna some that's a raven shit where it's just like oh 
I'm looking into the future now, and I see that we just unlocked this like new reality. Well, he wasn't he wasn't wrong about that. We've like you said, well, isn't not Murphy's law, uh, Moore's law. Oh shit, yeah, M Moore. And it was some M. He's like, think about that now. We're already on a fast track of a lot of different things. Like, you could already tell like AI is like. I mean, we've been saying this for decades now, how like AI technology is just going to create some sort of like weird symbiotic force with humanity. Uh, we're going to essentially be like living with gods now because it's, it's just going to process so much more shit than we could ever process. Well, I don't know. If, yeah, living with gods, creating gods, we have become gods. Right. I think this one we can, uh, you know, agree on. It's very flowery, like all of his texts. But he's saying like, "Hey, we've just we've we've had something really cool here. This technology stuff. One, we can't stop it. But two, we should encourage it. Mm. Right. Whereas, I think a lot of people. Who, who are those groups? Uh, of uh, there's like a group who wanted to like stop factories and stop automation. Ludites. The Ludites, yes. Like that would be, they would be against this. They would be against uh, number eight. But I think the, the majority of us have seen like, oh no, technology can be helpful. And, you know, obviously there should be some patience in how it's implemented and, you know, some um, some thought into it. Mm. Like just don't throw anything out of screen. Mm. Uh, care about your code, care about your engineering, care about your design, right? Those things are just as important as... Uh, how you do it is just as important as what you can do. Right. But I think he's just saying, uh, no, just like, maybe I'm reading into this, but I think he's saying, no, just fucking do it. Don't worry about how. Just right. fucking do it. He's like, why should we be looking back over our shoulders? So like... Yeah, don't worry about the consequences. Yeah. Um, or looking back over our shoulders kind of seems like, uh, like, you know, looking back into the past, like looking back to our forefathers and like uh, what they wanted, you know? It's like, we're... He says like... they're. This train isn't stopping. We're moving towards where time and space, they're dead. Like, we're getting there. So why why take our time or why look back onto, why just look back onto tradition? Like, let's just move forward into this new reality. Like, there's no stopping it. Let's just get there. He's like impatient. nothing wrong with that i mean there's a lot of things wrong with being impatient but there's nothing wrong you know it's like like you said there's so much consistency and everything builds upon each other at this point of course he's not patient you know yeah and if you if you uh why'd you look at my hat hmm? why'd you look at my hat <laughs> it's flat yeah i'll go a little flat oh there it is yeah yeah, 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 yeah. it's just kind of a Itch in the top of my forehead. I feel you. Better? Yeah. Uh, I was saying something, but then you looked at my hat and I just became subconscious. Oh. Well, I, I don't think subconscious is the right word. Damn, you I thought, saw me looking at your hat? I thought... If you saw me looking at your hat, damn. I can, the then, I can see you looking at my tits, dude. Damn. <laughs> it can't be! But how? There's no way. Greetings. I am Lelouch v. Britannia of the Royal Family, 99th Emperor of the Realm. Good Lord. How can this be? It, it's really you? You're alive? You know, all, br all breasts are nice breasts. War has changed. It's no longer about nations ideologies or ethnicity it's an endless series of proxy battles fought by mercenaries and machines war and its consumption of life has become a well-oiled machine anyway we're, we're off topic um should we just jump to number nine all right yeah um, oh this is my favorite one this this is my no this is not my favorite one this is uh <laughs> This is the tenet that I think is the most revealing of the entire manifesto. All right. 
Uh, Let's get into it. Number nine, we wish to glorify war, the soul cleanser of the world, Militar- militarianism, patriotism, the destructive acts of the libertarian, beautiful ideas worth dying for, and scorn for women. <laughs> final part. This is, it's not the final tenet. There's no, I two- just, no, I just remember reading this uh, on my own, and I was just like, okay, yeah, destruction, war, um, yeah, what, what, you know, what's left on the list? Left the list. In the score. <laughs> like the you know, score for women should have been. I felt like it should have been its own thing, but like he just like kind of just like added that right at the end. And I have no idea what it has to do. It, it's because I think of the women he's interacted with. They were not rebellious. They were not. Well, actually, that doesn't make any sense. I feel like women are rebellious. But he was like, I bet you the women he interacted with were not of the aggression of the the need for speed, you know, like yeah, they don't they don't subscribe to any of this violent aggressiveness. Yeah, like it's not part of their mo. Like, and for him, he's just like, well, yeah, he he's trying to piss people off with his art, and I think when women do art, they're not they're trying to be accepted, mm-hmm. you know. So it's like a, he he could he couldn't reason with a woman in a sense, right? He, like he wants, he would probably like uh, he needs a say it we'll just cut it if it's bad he needs a butch ass chick you know yeah well have you seen his wife no oh, wow no, he, he, he had three daughters that was a fucking oh big God. like oh yeah wow. that that was that was history's like f you to him yeah for sure f you f t take three of these women uh women Women. All right, this is where we get into like some Andrew Tate shit. Well, it's the, you know, the scorn for women. I don't think women are into this militarism, patriotism, destructive acts of the libertarian. I don't think like that at the time. I don't think women wanted to like, you know, those things have only helped women at that era, you know? Like. Yeah, but like, I don't think any of them are actualizing it. Or vocalizing it that like um a lot of women at the time and probably even now they're just probably of the sentiment that like war is bad war is bad and um war never changes they probably don't realize that maybe they're implicit in it yes um we all are yeah uh but he wants them to be explicit about like the support for it, the violence of it, you know, he wants to glorify it. Yeah. And that's not something women are probably willing to do or, you know, also they probably weren't allowed to at the time. 1909. Yeah. Um, Women were just entering factories in some instances. Yeah. Well, like, you know, they don't have to like, Actually, no. In the majority to, like, directly support it, but you know, they can't support it with their contribution towards the war efforts. Like you know, working well, in that, those factories is isn't that what World War II did? Like it gave women the ability to like get jobs because men were at war, right? So at least in the United States. So in a way, World War II like pro feminist, pro feminist movement, just like uh, opening up these men but, these it, men's jobs to women and there's a lot of women that like it's like an indirect though it wasn't purposefully done yeah it's indirect i mean there wasn't like a, a conscious effort to do it it's just like the natural order of things that like it made it happen it was a necessity yeah and that's like kind of what has been happening with uh capitalism i know we're kind of like getting off track with it but like uh capitalism indirectly is opening up jobs to women because you know why why limit only one worker out of the household let's get more now you sound like a capitalist no i I think i'm just like a you know a capitalist whisperer like i'm just like explaining (laughs) i'm just like it's actually helpful (laughs) you know just like uh like i don't know 
I don't even know how to. Well, make those who benefit from it are only gonna sing its praises, right? Yeah, and a lot of people, but a lot of people also don't know that they're benefiting from it. Like it just like surrounds all parts of their lives, but they hate it. But like, guess what? Like it's making shit run around. Well, you, you could argue the same about uh, futurism, about like how it's you know. This, how could you scorn women if you're the product of a woman giving birth to you? You know, it's like, yeah, you know, it's, it's like you, you couldn't have existed without women in some cases or in some sense, you have to be grateful for women. I guess you could so scorn them and be grateful. Mm -hmm. So maybe those are not, you know, diametrically opposed. I like how he says beautiful ideas worth dying for ripe voices scorn for women. Yeah. That's he's like an incel. Who hasn't gotten laid yet, you know? Right. Like, how, how do we know so much about this guy? People... Like, this guy should just be a small blip in society. People uh, looked at his plays. People looked at his poetry. Like, he was an artist. He made money in art. Uh, one of his first uh, futurist works was a drama called The Feasting King. It came out four years before this manifesto. And uh, this is, like, where I was kind of starting... He wanted to be heckled. Like, he had the desire to be heckled. And then when somebody uh, basically heckled him, he fought him in a duel. <laughs> like, he wanted... He just wants to fight people, you know? Some yeah. people are just like that. You want to start shit, and whoever's the, whoever steps up, that's your match. This is the dude who uh, works out and trains on a punching bag. And he's just like daydreaming. I I wish. I wish for the day someone said some shit to me. Oh, he had a drama. Leroy Bombins. Oh, this is the, the Feasting King. Yeah. He fought some critic. <laughs> but he asked for like criticism. <laughs> like he was just inviting it. It was pretty smart actually. I'd fight this guy. He's my enemy. Yeah, you kinda have to. Because he's going to want to fight you. <laughs> yeah, you know? he wants that. He wants that. He's the guy like... I don't know, man. Do you think he would call the cops? He's... I don't think he would. I think he would just like take the L or take the dub, regardless of how it stands. Maybe. He would take the L, but he would come back the next day with... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like a lead pipe. Yeah. You know, it could be like he's gotten into brawls like because he was doing art at the time and he was mm. doing shows and some of his shows got violent right mm. and it could have been like a woman tried to like you know uh diplomatically like stop the violence and he was like no no that's the point you know or maybe like a woman was ruining the fun and that's why he's just like or maybe the fight was for women no i don't think so the fight would only be for like cars and tech i mean it was like men Oh, he was fighting over a woman? Yeah, it was like men love getting fancier cars and their peers to impress women. You know? Oh, dude, you were right. I am fidgeting in this chair. Yeah, it's fine, though. It's not that, like, bad. I'd say it was bad. Yeah. But, um, yeah, maybe that's what it is. It's like uh, he has scorn for women because maybe he's just like, it's almost like contradictory. It's like he's uh he embraces the idea of like jumping into war, but he hates women or he has scorn because yeah, I just I don't think you can logic this one out. Like yeah, the, 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 the there's something personal I here. Read it. Yeah, I read it. It was like a person. It was like why, why, bro? Like why did you talk about? It, it's one of the things that gets thrown out later because when there's like a second wave of futurism. All of a sudden, like that tenant gets dropped, and like women become a big part of the artistic movement, you mm -hmm. know. So it's clearly something that he wasn't. He was just mad at the moment, right? He's probably got rejected, you know. Yeah, because like if you know, beautiful things that are worth dying for, it should be like women. Yeah, like that's the <laughs> they're men's, beautiful. You know, back then that's like the men's jobs. Like I'm dying for my my queen. You know, my queen will live on. I'm dying for her. Like yeah. Like, but it's a job. apparently maybe his queen's just maybe he's never found his queen yeah, he never found his queen this guy's hurt this guy's like you know this you know incel 
I imagine the guy must have had a bad life. Bro, this you guy's know? bullied for sure. Oh, for sure he was bullied, man. Yeah, we wish to glorify war. What a fucking ninth bullet point. What a hard, like, there's no, there's no way against that, you know? There's no arguing with glorifying war. You, you just either are or you're not. I don't think I met anyone who liked the idea of war. I know people that like the idea of killing for a war. Defending. Right. No, killing. Like, <laughs> like, yeah, uh, yeah, tomatoes, tomatoes. I met, I met some like jarhead motherfuckers that were just like excited to go to the desert and kill some brown people. It's like, it was like a joy. It's like, you know, like a, like a present for them. Like, oh, I can't wait. Like, send me over so I can kill some brown people. But I, I, I feel like they wanted to do that, but I'm not sure if they like the idea of war. I don't think I met anyone who's just like, yeah, I'm glad. I'm glad we fight. Like, I'm glad everyone fights, you know? Uh, it just sounds maniacal. It is, for sure. When you're okay yeah. with murdering... <laughs> like, I don't think this manifesto is is dumb. You know, I think this manifesto is actually pretty smart. And not something I agree with, but it's something like, uh, there's like a consistent logic in it. Even though he says like, go oh, fuck logic. There is a consistency that he's trying to do. I guess it's just like painting aggressiveness as like, uh, the answer. And yeah. That's probably why Mussolini kept him close. Cause it's just like, yo, this guy, he's gaining so much clout. There's like a following. I don't, he probably didn't agree with everything he had to say, but at least he's getting, he's driving on the point of how we need to just laud aggressiveness uh, and just kind of look away at the morality of things. Because that will help Mussolini's cause if he decides to invade another country. I have come here to chew bubblegum and kick ass. And I'm all out of bubble. Oh, shit. Oh. Ten. Ten. Ten, 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 ten. Number 10. We wish to destroy museums, libraries, academics of any sort, and fight against moralism, feminism, and every kind of materialistic, self serving cowardice. There you go. So if you thought, he clarifies it even more. Like, Definitely against feminism. Definitely yeah. against moralism. This is where, like, if this was the first, you know, you could have replaced, used this one tenant to replace the last nine. Because this is, like, kind of summing up, you know. Yeah, it was just like, if you were a little confused on where yeah, I'm going exactly. with this, if you're a little let confused. me be a little bit more descriptive for you. Fuck schools. Fuck women. Fuck any sense of morals. Yeah. Uh, any tradition, fuck it. Get rid of it. Uh, do what you're passionate about. Do what makes you happy. Like, not happy, but, like, do what makes you a winner. <laughs> you know? Whatever it makes you ahead, do that. But I don't get this last part. Every kind of materialistic, self-serving power. So he's not trying to... I don't think he's trying to preserve anything. It's so like, when he got in the car crash, I think he was like... I think I said this in a better way uh, weeks ago. But he's going to just, like, crash a car and then get a new car. And, you know, it's not about uh, preserving any item. It's about using the item and discarding it. He's a, he's a single-use kind of guy. You know, he's not buy it for life. Because mm. mm. if, you, if you care about something like old art, if you want to preserve like an ancient urn or, or some vase, he, he's like, okay, you're self-serving, right? Yeah, you're, it's like waste. It's like you, you're celebrating waste. Yeah. Yeah. This this is definitely the bullet point to explain first wave futurism in my mind. I was like cool with just like being aggressive and all that, but like now you're just saying like you want to burn down the schools and the museums. Uh, how are you supposed to learn, dog? Like, <laughs> yo, bro, there's, you know, we didn't just like get these cars from the heavens. We had to like build it. We had to like teach knowledge to each other. No, you just you just figure it out yourself. 
<laughs> you, you it's know. like this is like definitely there's a there's a way to get into the future is to like build upon the things that you know and you know spread it to the next generation so they can build something better than you like if you're gonna burn down libraries and schools like you're kind of like just chopping yourself on, on the feet like it's not futurist so it's kind of like contradictory in my opinion that's why you know i actually think he's like I think he just got like a weird brain hemorrhage when he like crashed his car. Like he just started off like, like that CTE anger of just like, yeah, you know, we need to just fucking man up, just be mad. And then now he's just like, yeah, I'm just, you know, fuck school, <laughs> fuck school, <laughs> fuck those museums. I don't, I don't yeah, like going burn, there. Burn that shit down too. Fuck women. And uh, I, I think he lost. He might have lost people on this point. No, I think this is the point that sealed it. Like, this is the point where young men were like, I get it. Like, I'm mad at these institutions too. I think history is boring. Women don't want to sleep with me. Uh, what is it? Moralism sucks. I don't know. Who wants to be moral? If you're a young kid, why would you ever want to be moral? Like, you have no sense of death. You have no sense of the future. So just... like, This is like an anti-religious sentiment. Because like, the only reason to be moral back then is because you don't want to go to hell. No, I think that's like a thousand years ago. I think by this era, this is after the Renaissance. Right. So moralism, God is already dead. Moralism is now about like, how can you impart a better future for your kids? And he's mm -hmm. like, no, fuck those kids. Fuck those institutions. This is the last generation. <laughs> right. And he talks about that later about how the younger ones are going to eventually do the same thing that he's doing, mm. you know? weird because like feminism is probably like a new movement but i'm not sure yeah maybe like probably in this age first first wave feminism right. right it's like but no to hate feminism is like kind of being traditionalist no oh, i see <laughs> yeah it's kind of a, a circular thing to go on there yeah so you see what i mean like there's a lot of like weird contradictory stuff in here it's like you're you don't like materialism, but you love this car. Yeah, he's he's cherry picking which ideas, uh, which f new ideas are worth keeping. Well, being a cherry picker, that's very incel like, right? Like you know, no, I think a lot of people are cherry pickers. Doesn't you don't have to just be an incel? Yeah. Why? Well, I, I mean, incels can be cherry pickers, but not. I don't know. I don't know where we going off that. Not every. Not cherry every picker. incel is a cherry Not picker. Every cherry picker is an incel, but every incel I know is a cherry picker. I don't know very many incels, but I've seen them on the internet. Yeah, they're probably cherry picking. Like, um, I hate women. They're like, oh, but not my mom. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> it's like you hate you hate your mom, you know. Well, I think some incels hate their mom. Yeah, but like, not all, right? So if you hate women, then with your mom bro your mom's not a woman your mom's your mom <laughs> your mom is like we're almost at the end here like <laughs> getting well, fucking tired yeah let's get to it do you think do you wonder ever you're a bad man no i don't wonder marty world needs bad men We keep the other bad men from the door. Number 11. We shall sing of the great multitudes who are roused up by work, by pleasure or by rebellion, of the many hued, many voiced tides of revolution in our modern capitals, of the pulsating nightly door of arsenals and shipyards ablaze with their violent electric moons, of railway stations, Voraciously devouring smoke belching serpents of workshops hanging from the clouds by their twisted threads of smoke of bridges, which like giant gymnasts bestride the rivers flashing in the sunlight of gleaming knives of intrepid steamships that sniff out the horizon of broad breasted locomotives champing on their wheels like enormous steel horses bridled with pipes in the lissom flights of the airplane whose propellers fluttered like a flag in the wind, seeming to applaud like a crowd excited. 
So this just sounds like... This is like the, the city he wants to see. He wants to walk through this city and he'll be like, you know, like just all this commotion happening, but all the commotion is for, uh, you know, like hype. Like it's like it's like society is churning. Like yeah, it's, it's like it's 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 something is brewing. Yeah, it's a gear. Like, it's like a gear system going at full blast. You know, right. e every like, part's being used. I mean, it probably wasn't there at the time, but like he would love to see just like planes flying, hot air balloons, yeah, hundred percent efficiency, trains going. Yeah, uh, like he just loves it all. Just like oh man, look at this, like. Like he would love to just sit on top of like a, a skyline right now. And this and is just... kind of what we did. We did this like this is capitalism moving at 100 percent, right? Or not not even capitalism, industry moving at 100 percent, where we thought it was good for a long time, and then you realize like, oh no, a lot of the things we have are not 100 percent efficient. They're very wasteful. The byproducts of which can destroy ecosystems. Mm -hmm. And it's like we didn't, you know, we're stupid. We're stupid monkeys and or great apes, and we didn't realize. Uh, you know. Yeah, he's just like uh, an ignorant child. But we were all ignorant. Like, you can't fault somebody at this era. I mean, maybe you could, but I think the majority of people didn't realize, like, there are consequences to industry. Mm. Even now, there's a lot of people who are like, you know, like, obviously there's a pro to the invention of uh, um, synthetic fertilizers, right? We're all able to eat because of it, right? Right. The starvation is gone. Famines are very mo like nearly non-existent uh, because of our, uh, you know synthetic fertilizers. At the same time, the byproduct of synthetic fertilizers is like a straight up uh, carbon dioxide. Right? You can't produce like ammonia without carbon dioxide. Just like that's the process. And, uh, and we're realizing like that byproduct is probably going to be responsible for killing a lot of people. Like the product is there to give people food, and then the byproducts there to like end their life. Right. This, is, this is like I don't know, it's like some sort of like Marxist like point you're making. It was just like uh, industry is helpful, but like you know, it's just squeezing more out of us. Like it's it's only like it's. Well, what I'm trying to say, there's a trade off, right? Yeah. Uh, and I the, I don't even know if the trade off is like a balanced or if it's more bad. I think it's more good than bad, right? The fact that we have eight billion people means like there are so many more minds to solve these more complex problems, mm -hmm. right? Uh, because you could argue like, okay, maybe we only have 4 billion people and then we don't have the um, fertilizer byproduct problem. Uh, but then we, you know, maybe we wouldn't have in, uh, invented like uh, supercomputers or right. quantum computers. Like less of a workforce. Yeah, there's less of a workforce. There's less innovative minds. Remember, the more minds you have, kind of like the more extreme. It's kind of like a circular plague. It's just like, man... Uh... We found a way to feed all these people, and now there's less plight. What we're gonna people do when, when there's less plight? They're gonna fuck. Like they're gonna celebrate. Like oh man, we have plenty of food. Like well, I, I don't we're think gonna that's, afford more people. I don't think that's why people fuck. Right? Pe uh, I mean, it's like if, you, if it's like if the problem with like uh, people, having having less offspring, or, or it's like the reason why I would imagine having less offspring is just like you don't have any resources. No, no, that's uh, that's the exact opposite, I think. I think the reason why people fuck is because you know that child can be a worker on the farm. They are a resource. Yeah, but, like, as we move forward in this day and age, it's like there's a lot of people saying, like, oh, why don't they want children? It's because they can't afford them. Can't well, that's because them. that's because the children have become a luxury. Like, a thousand years ago, children were a necessity. You had to have children because you knew some of them were going to die. Right. And the ones who could survive could be... Could but I feel like this, this is, like, 1920 mindset yeah that that children thinking. are a luxury at this point right my dog all right this is some downtime in the podcast so i'm just gonna i'm just gonna read some shit
what we can say is that the 11 bullet points were like his core actions to young men. Mm -hmm. Here's what you should do. Here's why you should join the war effort, which hasn't happened yet, but like when it does, here's why you should join the war effort. Mm. Here's how you should treat art. Here's what, what you should like no longer consider as a viable option. Right. And these, you would think these 11 things came from his accident, right? Uh, you know, his head injury or whatever. So I guess he wants to say, it sounds very like, uh, very like uh simplistic shit of just like say shit with your chest like get people no not not not, not say shit do shit with your chest like it's not enough to say it it's you right. have to write the poetry down you have to actually make the art mm. you have to you know you have to not just talk shit you have to do shit right uh be on your toes never be on your heels fucking uh be passionate generosity of your spirit like uh i i get why this would resonate with young men you know it I'm 30, but it's, you know, some of these points still like resonate with me. And I can understand if I had no direction and I was bored of history and I was bored of academia and I hated churches, you know, and I wasn't getting laid. I could understand like, oh yeah, I would, yeah, I'm fucking down with this whole, uh, fast, you know, go fast. Don't worry about consequences type, uh, you know? Yeah. This lifestyle. Yeah. This lifestyle. I th I think it might have been good for me that I started later. Uh, I might have been a very immature kid uh, when I was 30, <laughs> to be honest. That's a weirdo. What would you rate this manifesto on a scale to 10? 10 out of 10, that was pretty good. <laughs> 10 out of 10. You loved I liked it. it. You I really loved liked it. it. <laughs> I really loved it. It was, uh, it makes you think. It didn't really make me think much. I was just sitting in this. This was like smut, <laughs> smut to me. Like, I gave this a 6 out of 10. Like, uh, it didn't really feel like his ideas were bold. Didn't really feel like... See, I, I thought it's, the exact... It's I don't think they're really, bold either. Uh, but yeah. I think the, the ideas he's having are the ideas that are kind of in all of us, you know? Like, when we play Grand Theft Auto, we don't even have to think. We all act violent immediately, you know? It's like, this is innate. This human anger, uh, you know, we are selfish creatures. And yeah, we have, like, we, the culture know, that we surround ourselves with is to go against this manifesto. We're trying not to be this, but inherently we are this, we are selfish. He, you know, if he cut it off at nine. <laughs> no, I think even nine is too far. <laughs> if he could just cut it off at like scorning women, if that was the end. <laughs> <laughs> That's like the final like cherry on top of like, okay, everything work out. Everything, this whole plan, it can all work out if, you know. In the end, women got to fucking play along. Or if not, they're some bitches. Wait. But they women... have to play along into, into like, the, the violent and aggressive oh, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. nature. I was like, going to say, because women do is, have to play along. Yeah, which is not part of, like, their MO, you know. Usually they're, they, you know, more softer, feminine side. You know, yeah, and we have to play along serenity. with that. Like, that's kind of the deal. Like, we play with them, they play with us. Right. But according to, you know, Tommaso, like, fucking, he's saying, no, that, uh, fuck those women that think that way. They're bitches. Like, you need, we need to, like, drag them along into this. They need to get with the program. Like, fuck feminism. Um, which is weird because it's like, you know what? According to feminism, they should, they, you know, equal lefts and rights, like, you know, give your wife a gun. Have her join you in war. You know, if you're really all about, if you really want to be aggressive, give your wife a spear. Let her, let her lead too, or let her, let her come along into these ditches and, uh, you know, protect your country. And it gets there, I think, with second wave futurism. Yeah, but here it's not there yet. Yeah, he's building. He's building upon it. He's just young. He doesn't realize how valuable women can be. Anyway, this leads on to, uh, kind of just another poetic iteration of the eleven points, right? This like next. It is from Italy that we hurl at the world. 
It is from Italy. <laughs> it is from Italy. <laughs> Sorry about that. That's... Okay. Maybe we're just getting so. Uh... Maybe I should get that wine. It is from Italy that we hurl at the wor whole world this utterly violent, inflammatory manifesto of ours, with which today we are founding futurism. Because we wish to free our country from the stinking canker of its professors, archaeologists, tour guides, and antiquarians. For far too long has Italy been a marketplace for junk dealers. We want to free our country from the endless number of museums that everywhere cover her like a countless graveyards. Museums. Graveyards. They're the same thing. Really because of their grim profusion of corpses that no one remembers. Museums. They're just public flop houses where things sleep on forever alongside other loathsome or nameless things. Museums. Ridiculous avatars for painters and sculptors who are furiously stabbing one another to death with colors and lines all along the walls where they vie for space. Sure. People may go there on pilgrimage about once a year, just as they do to the cemetery on All Souls Day. I'll grant you that. And yes, once a year, a wreath of flowers is laid at the feet of the Gioconda. I'll grant you that too. But what I won't allow is that all our miseries, our fragile courage, or our sickly anxieties get marched daily around these museums. Why should we want to poison ourselves? Why should we want to rot? What on earth is there to be discovered in an old painting other than the labored contortions of the artist trying to break down the insuperable barriers which prevent him from giving full expression to his artistic dream? Admiring an old painting is just like pouring our purest feelings into a funerary urn. Instead of projecting them far and wide in violent outbursts of creation and of action, do you really want to waste all of your best energies in this unending, futile veneration for the past, from which you emerge fatally exhausted, diminished, trampled down? Make no mistake, I'm convinced that for an artist to go every day to museums and libraries and academies, the cemeteries of wasted effort, calvaries of crucified dreams, records of impulses cut short, is every bit as harmful as the prolonged overprotectedness of parents for certain young people who get carried away by their talent and ambition. For those who are dying away, for the invalids, for the prisoners, who cares? The admirable past may be a balm to their worries, since for them the future is a closed book. But we, the powerful young futurists, don't want to have anything to do with it. The past. So let them come, the happy-go-lucky fire razors with their blackened fingers here they come here they are come on then set fire to the library shelves divert the canal so they can flood the museums oh what a pleasure it is to see those revered old canvases washed out and tattered drifting away in the water grab your picks and your axes and your hammers then demolish pitilessly demolish all venerated cities the oldest among us are 30 so we have at least 10 years in which to complete our task. When we reach 40, other younger and more courageous men will very likely toss us into the trash can like useless manuscripts. And that's what we want. Our successors will rise up against us from far away, from every part of the world, dancing on the winged cadenzas of their first songs, flexing their hooked predatory claws, sniffling like dogs at the door of our academies, at the delicious scent of our decaying minds already destined for the catacombs of libraries. But we won't be there. Eventually they will find us on a winter night in a humble shed far away in the country with an incessant rain drumming upon it. And they'll see us huddling anxiously together bedside our airplanes, warming our hands around the flickering flames of our present day books, which burn away beneath our images as they are taking flight. They will rant and rave around us, gasping in outage and fury, and then, frustrated by our proud, unwavering boldness, they will hurl themselves upon us to kill us, driven by hatred made all the more implacable because of their hearts overflow with love and admiration for us. Strong, healthy injustice will flash dazingly in their eyes. Art, 
indeed, can be nothing but violence, cruelty, and injustice. The among the oldest among us are only thirty, and yet we have squandered fortunes, a thousand fortunes of strength, love, daring, cleverness, and of naked willpower. We have tossed them aside impatiently in anger, without thinking of the cost, without a moment's hesitation, without ever resting, gasping for breath. Just look at us. We're not exhausted yet. Our heart feel no our hearts feel no weariness, for they feed on fire, on hatred, and on speed. Does that surprise you? That's logical enough, I suppose, as you don't even remember having lived. Standing tall on the roof of the world, yet again we fling our challenge at the stars. Do you have any objections? All right, sure. We know what they are. We have understood. Our sharp, duplicitous intelligence tells us that we are the sum total of the extension of our forebears. Well, maybe. Be that as it may. But what does it matter? We want nothing to do with it. Woe betide anybody whom we catch repeating these infamous words of ours. Look around you, standing tall on the roof of the world. Yet once again, we hurl our defiance at the stars. Dot, dot, dot. Oh, I just finished reading this. <laughs> okay. Uh, so the one thing I want to get at is one, he's justifying, he's like reiterating everything. Uh, museums are garbage. Museums are graveyards. Let's just be aggressive. And he, he's very, uh, he's very consistent because he's saying, I'm at the age where I can do this, but eventually I'm going to reach an age where the younger people are, are going to uh, dominate me. The younger people are going to be way more aggressive, way stronger, and I'm going to be the weak one. And you know what? That's cool. Like, let me have my moment when I'm young and powerful. Mm -hmm. And then when, I, when I'm old, let the, let the kids, uh, you know. Right. So no one is like keeping a, there's no historian, there's no record of what is going on with society. If there's like beef between two different like uh, sides of a town, uh, people will know about it in the moment, but maybe five years from now, no one's going to know why the fuck they're fighting at all. What if the beef was just like, you know, you just stepped on someone's shoe. And these guys are, like, fighting for years and years. And someone's just going to be like, why the fuck are we fighting? No one's going to know. They're just going to assume, like, this is what you do. You just fight this other side. Uh, if you have someone recording history and is able to document this shit. Yeah, I think you're going about the wrong angle. The <laughs> Trying to, like, make sense of his uh, manifesto it's not going to work because he's claiming in the manifesto, like I, we're not, this is not an intended intended to like keep humanity alive. This is intended to end humanity. Cause you got to remember kids don't survive unless they have parents who protect them. But if everyone's killing everyone, then once those last children grow up to be adults, that's the end. Cause they're not going to protect the next era of children. You know what I'm saying? So eventually this, this, this is just like a giant, suicide pack or not suicide pack but it's just it's like a very slow suicide pack where you're just murdering and taking and doing whatever you need to do but it, it can't last and i think he knows that yeah it's just like just sounds like mad max like i don't i don't understand yeah, yeah mad max is a good way to say it like only the strongest survive uh and that's it people people really want that you want to live in this world where uh it's just chaos if you could get to the top of that like, I imagine this guy's poetry was not that good or whatever. He just wasn't successful in the moment. And he realized, oh, if, if I could influence them in another way and convince everyone that um, having a devil-may-care attitude is, uh, you know, the real way to live, or at least to the men, then he could potentially get on top because he would just, like, do whatever he wanted, you know? Why do you them. influence people? It's because you know, or at least the way I see it, you influence people because you know it'll probably help you somewhere down the uh, line, right? Like you would never do something, you would never influence the world in a way that would be detrimental to your future. You influence the world in a way so that it only helps your future. It, 
if this was written when, like 1920, so that'd be a hundred years later in 2020, uh, 2022, that all this shit would happen. I imagine that they would just be sort of like um, warlords around the United States, you know? Like you just uh, find somebody to protect you. And like there's this armed militia everywhere because if you're not armed and you're not protected and you're not willing to go aggressive, somebody else will, right? He's kind of mm. like, he's advocating for like, uh, just have fun and do whatever you want. But at the end of the day, it's going to lead to like tribalism, you know? Right. Remember, yeah. he wants the young men to throw him away when he's old. Oh, he's they're like, not going to just throw him away. They're going to, they're going to, he's going to be their pet. Like, yeah, yeah, I remember you. You're, you're that guy that got us to, you know, do it's all like this the, shit. The Clockwork Orange, uh, what are they call the drones, the drones, droogs. Was it like his gang? Yeah, his little gang. Uh, it's like that. You know, that's what he he wants. Like, strength will demand or control uh, everyone else. Yeah, this is a very Clockwork Orange type of energy. Where if you're, you just show any sign of weakness, like, that's just... Time to get people, attacked. Yeah, it's it's time to fuck you up. Like, you should, you shouldn't have, uh, you shouldn't have cried in front of us. Because now we're going to really make you cry. <laughs> yeah, no, 100%. That's exactly what he wants. In some regards, he won. In a lot of regards, he grew up and realized that his ideas weren't the most fleshed out. But I do think he sort of pushed uh, something that's still holding on today about the uh, not giving a shit about establishment, not giving a shit about asking for permission, right. just d doing what you need to do, being rebellious. I mean, you got chicks like uh, the best version of it would be like Greta Thunberg. Thun Thunberg? 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 Thunberg. Greta, yeah. Because uh, she's basically just like a rebellious youth, you know? Fighting ag out against the system. Yeah, she's kind of she's like an eco terrorist without the terror part. She's you know she's very aggressive and violent with her like her message, you know. She's yes. Just, like sick and tired of this. If you want to call her speeches uh, art, yes, I would say. Um, this can't seems to follow in with like his rhetoric of just like uh, being impeccable with like your direct, you know courage in your words your boldness for far too long has italy been a marketplace for junk dealers we want to free our country from the endless number of museums that everywhere cover her like countless graveyards museums graveyards <laughs> they're the same thing because of their grim profusion of corpses that no one remembers uh, people remember this shit you know if you're in a museum, no, I, I think he's kind of right about. I think he, there is something to say that he's getting to something that a lot of people feel, and that's the idea of like, we we, uh, we live on the shoulder of giants, right? But a lot of the work that we see, is kind of like you know, it's not good. <laughs> you know, like the Mona Lisa is only good because of the history behind the Mona Lisa, right? Right. Like, and and what's what's wrong with propagating that in a museum? Just having people remember this type of shit. Like he just doesn't want. Like this I guy's like. You, uh, you know how many people visit the Mona Lisa every day? It's like forty thousand or some shit like that. Right. Every day, forty thousand people enter the Louvre. Right. It's not even that great of an art piece, to be honest. I saw it but myself. Th that's what I'm saying, and I guarantee you, of all the people that look at it, they don't really take that much away from it. Right. They're being told, "Hey, this is important." Right, but no one's looking past that surface level. Uh, and I think, you know, more people should take the time and opportunity if they can to look into stuff more deeply. Like if you see a piece of art, you know, Google it yourself, like look at the history. Don't just read the plaque or or at least read the plaque, right? A lot of people don't even read the plaque. Uh, right. And I feel like that's what he's doing. He's probably no, like, I he, fucking hate reading. He's going so <laughs> far ahead. He's saying like, we should bomb those art pieces like they should not exist you know we should destroy history that's what he's saying 
right? It's a very extreme version, but he's get, he's tapping into something, right? Like there's a reason why we should care about history and old artifacts and stuff like that. Um, right. But most people don't. Like only archaeologists do. Like they can only, uh, you know, there's a level of um, expertise you need in order to see the beauty of something that most people don't see, right? And I think probably he just never saw the beauty in those things because he never cared, right? No, I really, I just don't think he gives a shit at all about like, it's not just collecting things in the museum, like old pieces, like he doesn't like, like actual paintings, he doesn't like sculpting, uh, or I think, I guess he considers it like, these guys are just painting and sculpting shit and just like fighting for space in an in an art museum or art. Yeah, it's a valid you know. criticism. I think based on the first like paragraph, I think he really did care about this stuff. Uh, because he was a poet. You know, he he cared about all of it until he went into that car crash, and then like that thrill of nearly dying was like, oh, everything else is bullshit. You know, it's like when you first uh start doing like an illicit drug the way you feel about it is like oh why do anything else like or like the first time you see a really good movie why do anything else you're just like a movie guy and then you realize like oh no you should appreciate other shit mm -hmm. but aggression is like an all-time high like look at both a any uh any click any like group any uh faction uh that's on the internet or in the world they are more aggressive now than ever because they're not afraid to share their ideas Right. Yeah, there are a lot of people who are, are scared, but I think more people are so committed to like that tenant of futurism like yeah, that. People, people love Twitter, you know, all these like political Twitter feeds, you know? Yeah, they're aggressive. Yeah, you have very, to be. You have to be yeah. the be heard. And I think that's what, you know, that's what, what it was all about. <laughs> Being heard, looking for attention, satisfying your own ego. I think that's what Mar Marinetti, Marinetti needed at the time. Twitter. Yeah. yeah, he needed Twitter. Yeah, 100%. He needed Twitter. Or some sort of social... I mean, that's what he did. He threw leaflets off the top of a tall building just to, like, spread the word. He was tweeting. That's his, like, old-school tweet. Just send it out to the masses. Don't be a bitch. That's what he's saying. Don't be a bitch. A lot of, a lot of people's rhetoric and manifestos, if you really break it down to its fundamentals, it's them saying, don't be a bitch. You know, uh, it, you know what's really funny? All of us live up to this manifesto when we play video games. When you play a, a shooter, when you play uh, Grand Theft Auto, you act as if this manifesto is, like, the way to play the game. You know, you kill people in Grand Theft Auto, you murder anybody you see in Call of Duty. Yeah, you hate women. <laughs> you hate, no, seriously, look at all the gamers who hate women. <laughs> the fucking Gamergate was, like, the clear example. Uh... See, and, and when there's no consequences in a virtual world, people are willing to act like, <laughs> uh, uh, whatever his name is, Martin Reddy. Martin Reddy. <laughs> I <laughs> it kind of makes sense when you're talking in the scope of Grand Theft Auto. You know, just stealing pedestrians' cars and just fucking crashing them, jumping into the next one. But it doesn't mean I want people. I I don't want everyone in the server to be a maniac. Of course you don't. I don't think even he wants that. I think he wants like I, no, enough I of it. No, because he, he doesn't. Does. He doesn't want women to have power. You know. He oh, doesn't right. want okay. professors to have power. He literally only wants the strong, the inconsiderate, the the violent to have power. He wants young men to beat him the fuck up. Yeah. He wants a young man to fuck him. <laughs> uh, he's just like a punk. Like, he really doesn't care. He says, we are the sum total and extension of our forebears. Well, maybe. Be that as it may. But what does it matter? What do you mean, what does it matter? He, he, like, you I, just he, said, he's, like, he's not trying the to be extension. the next giant. You know, he's not trying to shoulder any other people. He's like, I'm on top of shoulders, but no one's getting on my shoulders. I, you know, like progressivism, it's kind of like futurism in a sense where it's like, let's let's keep taking the best out of technology and push forward, mm -hmm. you know? 
Uh, I mean, I don't know what was around before futurism, but it f kind of feels like, I mean, just the reading of this, it feels like futurism was the first time someone said, let's go full Borg. Let's go full steam, you know? Yeah. Full Borg with a little cherry picking. He's like opening the gates, but he did a little bit of gatekeeping. I think he was closing the gates completely. Closing the gates. It kind of sounded like he just wanted whatever was the movement of like the the thirty year olds allow allow them to lead the way. Like get these old people out of here. Yeah. So that, that that feels like opening the gates. No, that feels like you finally got through the gates and now you're closing them behind you. Hmm. You know. Like he finally hit 30 where he had power and he could afford things. And then he was like, nobody else enters, you know, until you're, uh, unless you're young, uh, unless you're, you know, young and powerful. So he's like opening and closing at the same time. Yeah. I guess there's many gates. He was closing the gates on old people, opening the gates on yeah. young yuppies, right? Still makes him a gatekeeper. Yeah. We're all gatekeepers. But he's the most violent gatekeeper. Yeah, we all gatekeep like you gatekeep your life, your family, your your community, mm -hmm. right? Everyone, a, gate, a gatekeeper is just a protector, right? It's like you're, you're like your skin's a gatekeeper. You know, there used to be gatekeepers. Like, if you wanted most jobs in in the world, you had to go to school for it. You had to be an apprentice to some expert. You had to go through the gatekeepers. With the advent of the internet and like just uh, information in general, there were gatekeepers are going away. Like. You know, people can make video games by themselves. People can make music by themselves. They don't even have to buy expensive equipment. There's like the barrier to entry is getting smaller and smaller for most things. Sure, not everyone can open up a nuclear power plant. I, I think futurism did have a, a hold on people. And what they took was probably all, you know, once art's released, uh, it's different for everyone, right? What they, what they gleam out of it. And I think what most people took out of the futurism is like, we don't have to care about you know, we don't have to ask permission from our uh, the giants we stand on. Why? Why ask permission? You know, why? Why does it matter? Just do what we want to do. Uh, and I think most people are like, yeah, uh, I don't want to do anything violent. Uh, I love women. But yeah, let, let me just do whatever the fuck I want to do. Right? For that. We haven't ended it. I'm cutting all that. Anytime, anytime we're having fun, I'm cutting it. <laughs> this is not a fun cast. No, it's just... Uh... This is the vibe I'm going for. Uh, we'll, we'll always have the raws, I guess. We can always fuck around. Nate. This is purely educational. All right, how do you want to end it? How do you want to end it? Oh, fuck. I didn't think this far. Should we think? Thank people. Yo, if you listen this far. You actually clicked the right video. <laughs> we need if you listen this far. If you listen this far, then guess what? You listened this far. Yo, if you listen this far, we got to tell them, like, you got to say... Like this word to us next time you see us. Oh, like doll liquor. Go fuck yourselves. Go fuck yourselves. Oh, guys, go doll fuck yourselves. This is a real podcast manifesto.